Hello everybody and welcome back to A Taste of Donegal. So we're actually in a good position now on this map. We have done a lot of work on it. We've done some silage making, some hay making. Uh, we've done a small wheat harvest and from that we've managed to do some straw baling. And today we are going to move on to the next job which is going to be giving the cows their water. Yesterday we managed to do the turtle mix ration. They don't actually have silage on its own and they don't have just grass on its own. That'll be in a later video, but at least they have feed. Uh, all they need now really to stay alive is some bedding and also some water. Water, most importantly there. So we're down here at this end of the farm today, just to begin with, and we have got our very small, well, I call it very small, it's actually quite big, the Ford tractor, the 7840, which was doing the tedding before. Um, we're actually gonna use this to first of all go to the store to pick up a new water tank and actually it is the modified one if you if you look here we've got the Zun Hammer slurry tank it was changed last year it was modified into a water tank which actually does the job very well um, I do have it somewhere there it is it's 19,000 pounds so we're gonna buy that it is essentially still the slurry tank but it, it can now take water uh, which is obviously Pretty good. So let's drive over to the store and pick it up. Something else I'm going to have to do is try and locate where the water fill point is. It's probably in the yard, but I haven't really been looking out for it. Uh, so I'm going to have to go on a bit of a hunting mission for that. There aren't any rivers, to my knowledge, on this map, so we won't be able to fill it up from there. So it will just be a water fill point, but it's likely to be either around the store or in the yard somewhere. Now the good thing about this water tank is the fill capacity. It is way bigger than the one which comes in the base game. If you've got loads and loads of cows, you have to do no end of trips to and from the water fill point. Uh, if you've got this one, this converted slurry tank, you can just, I think probably, fill it up once and that will fill the trough. It is all influenced by the number of cows you own. At some point before the end of this series we're going to do some forestry work. I always try and do at least one episode of forestry on every single let's play that I do. Uh, I think this map especially is going to be a very good one for forestry because there's a lot of trees and they're also quite evenly distributed. So it won't be too tricky to get the machinery in and out of there. And actually I think yeah, all, all the land underneath the trees is actually grass. So we could actually mow under there if we wanted to. We bring a, a topper or something. Obviously, we don't need to. It's just if we're short of a job to do, that might be uh, something interesting to do. So let's go and find that water fill point. Maybe I have seen it without realising. I would have thought it'd be around here somewhere. Can't see it yet. Um, I might have to just go off screen and try and find it. There's a diesel tank, but no water tank yet, or no water fill point. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go off screen and do this. Oh, no, there it is. Brilliant. Warning, not drinking water. So, yes, I'll have seen that many times before. I'll have seen it when I've been reversing, so I'll have known not to crash into it, but clearly not really acknowledged it's there but at least it is really nearby like literally right next to the cow field and we have still got these bales in the shed here we are going to move them and we're going to do it just with the JCB I think we're not going to use any more of that trailer for unloading the automatic unload is just too unrealistic for some people apparently that is weird it's like a dance that it's doing. It seems to be a lot of water bowsers that do this in Farming Simulator. I think it's when you don't have a big enough tractor on on the front. Uh, they tend to just do a dance for, for fun. Weird. Anyway, that is almost full. In the future we will move those bales with the JCB 
and we'll position them somewhere out of the way where we're not going to have to keep moving them and crashing into them and I'm going to have to reverse out of here this is going to be quite tricky go around the corner oh look that cow's found the feed we gave it only one cow out of all of those oh no two cows two cows have found it now I'm not sure but it looks like they are going to need to be mucked out soon I don't know if you can actually get in there or not uh, I think that is the milk fill point there the milk trigger the turning on this tractor is actually surprisingly small the turning circle is not very good it might just be because we've got this on the back but before the cows escape let's go and fill up their trough they all seem to be walking over the trough weirdly So when it goes, this is probably going to take a while to fill up. We'll probably drown that cow in the process. And I think I'll probably get out of the tractor because it's just rocking up, rocking about too much. It is going up. We're in the trough as well with the cow. It's a weird situation. If we can get it at least right, three quarters of the way up the trough, then that'll be fine. But with a bit of luck, it will actually fill it. Still go oh there we go. Well that's okay. Three quarters is fine. It has totally emptied this tanker. As long as we're nearby, on standby, then it won't be an issue. We just can't let them run out of water. It's actually a shame that they don't die, although it seems really harsh, it's a shame they don't die if you don't give them water because it, it means you've got to keep concentrating on them more. There goes the frames per second loss again. I am once again considering buying a new computer. Uh, it's just, the, the cost isn't necessarily a problem. It's just, I was going to build one myself and I have worked out how much it would cost for, for the spec that I want. And it's come to about 1600 pounds, which is okay, I guess. Um, and I have been looking on the internet at pre-built ones because I always thought the pre-built ones were more expensive because obviously you've got the labour involved uh, for someone else to build it for you. However, there really isn't that much difference in the price, which I was really surprised about. But I wanted to build one myself, but I just can't justify spending more money for me to do more work. So, yeah, I have kind of come to a bit of a tricky situation there because I did want to do a video series on, on building my own PC but why would I throw money in the bin essentially that's all it would be so yeah it's a bit of a weird scenario there I'm still kind of considering what to do for the best I might not even buy one yet it's just it's on my mind and I think we do need one because as you've noticed we are having some frames per second losses which is a bit annoying it probably doesn't mean that I have to change the computer, but it's it's a bit old now and uh, I could probably do with a bit of an upgrade. So yes, it is on my mind and we'll probably do that soon. Anyway, the next job for today, I've totally lost my train of thought there, is to do some mowing. We need to go and mow another field with this John Deere tractor on the uh, 956 mower, the MoCo John Deere. So we'll start it up. I know that some of you disapprove of this tractor, but I think as we're going to be using a John Deere implement, we might as well use a John Deere tractor uh, to pull it and power it because it's John Deere, it'll look good. A whole John Deere setup. It's not something I do very often. So all we need to do now is find a field. Field number 6 is huge, field number 23 is quite big, field number 27 is quite big. They are the three fields that will need to be done at some stage. The other three are obviously regrowing again. Uh, the growth rate, I think, is on either slow or normal. I think we might do field number 23. I think that'd be quite a good one to do. And this time, I will offset the mower. I think I've already explained this before, uh, but I had a few dislikes for not offsetting it. 
I actually said in the video that I knew that it had to be offset in real life, but I just couldn't find the control for it because it didn't tell you on the control page. So, yes, it did make it a bit unrealistic and probably quite frustrating to watch. But this time, we're going to do it properly. That is the plan. And soon, we might be able to buy some more fields as well. So this is actually going to be, I guess you could say, a silage harvest, in effect. We're going to pick it up with, most likely, a forage harvester. Because we are going to get one. Uh, now, the forage harvester we could use for a number of things including picking up grass and also harvesting maize this is just going to be a case of mowing the field putting it into a swath and then coming along with the forage harvester picking it up, putting it in a trailer and putting it in the silage pit that is the first job uh, then after that we're going to turn some grass fields into some arable fields because we're going to plant some maize we'll then use the forage harvester again and we'll do yet again another silage harvest so yeah, we've got a lot of silaging on the horizon, it's just working towards it all which is going to be a bit of a slow process, but yeah, I should probably look behind me here. It's, yeah, very narrow down here. Okay, so I've just spun round, it isn't actually down there. I went all the way down and then discovered there isn't a gateway there. To get there, you have to go down the same way as where we went to field 21, field 21 is on the right. Um, and then right around the back of everywhere there is another gateway which I think runs through another field to get into field 23 so quite a complicated situation if you've not played on the map before it's certainly got me confused I'm sure there is a good explanation for it um, so through here here we are we have to go through uh, what looks to be like a, a little woodland it's not a forest but still a small woodland Getting around the corner with this is the tricky thing. Getting through gateways is also quite a tricky thing. That is where we need to go to. So I think um, the first headland we do we will have to obviously run on the crop, or the grass, because there is nowhere else for us to go. But then after that we offset it, and that way it will work a lot more realistically and we won't be crushing the grass prior to mowing it, because that would be ridiculous, that's what we did before. So if we just get backed up here, we can do the first headland and pretty much go from there. first time round we need to really keep close to the hedge so we get everything we can do. We need to stay vigilant. I just don't want to catch the hedge because it will make the mower fly it to the side and it will make a mess. Uh, that's a good start. I don't know if it's the same as Cobra Park Farm on this map, but on Cobra Park Farm the collision was right in the middle of the hedge. Um, on Cobra Farm, I think the first one, I think the whole hedge was collisioned. So you have to be really careful, you could get caught on it really easily. I'm just trying to work out whether this is the same, as you see. Oh yeah, I think the collision is in the middle, so it is harder to catch yourself on it. But that's working okay. Looking forward to when we can offset it. Right at the top of the field, with a good view over the map, you can see the majority of the fields except for this field here, uh, field number 22. The majority of the fields are actually grass. We are going to convert some, but it does need to be still primarily all grass because that's what it is in County Donegal. 
so we've got to stay as realistically as possible but it's okay because we are going to convert them for maize so silage uh, so still for livestock use right then so we've made our first way around the field we can now offset it that is looking so much better doing it this way just feels so much better because we're obviously not crushing the grass before we know it and it actually looks a lot better as well I do like this setup I think it works really well because the tractor's got enough horsepower it's obviously a John Deere and the mower is a John Deere and it is really just the right size for the map the sooner we can get some silage sold the better because our money although is looking quite healthy still it is going to be depleted soon as we are spending quite a lot of money on livestock, feed and also tractors. Um, so I think just to begin with we'll probably rent the forage harvester but I do want to own one at the end. That can be our goal. Actually using this offset mower is not only a nice thing to use but it's also very easy to use because literally all you have to do is just stay within the swath you did previously and it does that on perfectly straight so I actually think I prefer this over the butterfly mowers I think also I'm going to keep going round the field, just keep going clockwise around, uh, because when it comes to loading all this up, we won't have to keep turning round, we'll just keep going round and round like we are doing now. I don't know if that is the right way of doing it, but it, it looks like it's going to be quite easy to load it up that way, so for this field at least I'm going to do it this way, but if I change, it'll be because I've had a load of negative comments or lots of dislikes, uh, that is what usually influences my decisions. But Obviously, sometimes I do my own thing as well, uh, but I like to make it suited for the audience. Uh, so, if, yeah, for example, this tractor, uh, some people have said they don't like it, some people have said they like it. So I'm keeping it, because I personally like it, and there hasn't really been enough people saying that they don't like it. It's starting to get that nice look to the field, where there's lots of nicely laid out swaths all evenly spaced well <laughs> as much as I can do them obviously not too evenly but yeah you know what I mean it looks fairly decent and it's going to look quite smart by the end of this hopefully that's the plan anyway um, just got to keep going really until we are done So for those of you who watch my Christmas special or are subscribed to my other channel, Machinery Restorer, uh, you will probably know that I bought, I think it was in yeah, December last year, I bought that used Massey Ferguson compact tractor, 1220, manufactured in 1994 I think. Uh, well I've got to the stage now where I kind of need lights on the back, I need to fit some strobe lights and I've got some coming, I've got some strobe lights coming and a company has been very kind to me and they've actually sent me them uh, free of charge so I'm going to do a review of that very soon and I might do the actual fitting a fitting video fitting it to the tractor uh, or I might show the setup unboxing them out of the box and showing them on the tractor seeing how bright they are and everything uh, but yeah that is something which I'm going to be doing very soon on this channel and possibly my other channel as well just depends but yeah definitely this channel because it's going to be like an unboxing review looking forward to seeing how good they are um, so yeah that is all going to have to be set up I need to wire all that in and everything so that is something to look out for in the future and yeah on, it's mainly because when I'm reversing into like a shed 
um, it, it doesn't have any lights on the back except for the brake lights. So you can't really see if the lights are off. You can't really see where you're going. So I think putting some lights on the back would be pretty good. These are super bright LEDs. And I think I'm being sent two lots actually. Very kind. Um, I might do the others on the front. I need to probably fabricate some brackets and bolt them to the chassis at the front near the toolbox. Obviously if you haven't seen my other videos you probably won't know what I'm on about but uh, yeah I need to get some on the front as well, wire them in, put a switch in and everything and uh, I'm hoping to do it all properly with a relay. I've had no end of issues with wiring problems in the past year from what other people have done to other machinery I've been working on. Uh, so yeah it's always nice to do your own wiring because you know how good it is. If someone's done a really bad job it could be a fire hazard for all you know. But. Yep, yeah, just letting you know that, that is coming up very soon on this channel hopefully. And also, at some point on my other channel, I am going to be changing the hub sail on, well both sides actually, front, left and right, because they're both leaking. I think, essentially, what happens is if you don't clean the front axle after using it in the dirt, uh, basically the grit gets in the seal, and as you turn, it's like grinding it in and it basically eventually grinds the seal away and then of course because it's filled with oil the oil starts to leak so I've got two of those changed they're very expensive but hoping to do a video on that too that in itself I think is quite a complex and in-depth job so I definitely need to do a video of that for the future <laughs> if I ever have to do it again uh, but yeah just letting you know what's happening on my other channel I have been absent from that channel for a long time I apologise for that, I do need to do some more videos. Just been really busy recently, so... Yep, returning to that channel very soon. Keep an eye out. Getting close to the end now. I think it's looking okay. Um, <laughs> messing up a bit here, but on the whole, it's pretty good. And just the final bit here, and then we'll be done. So at the end, I'll probably go up in the air to our drone footage as usual, and see what it looks like from above. It's not obviously amazing, but I think compared to some of the mowing I've done in the past, it's a bit better than that really. So please do have your own opinion on it. Um, yes, if you've seen my mowing in the past, you'll probably agree that it is better than that. It's definitely not a piece of art though. And just a tiny bit of mist there. And we're done. So let's put that back into the centre. Turn it all off. And I'll just pull over to the side of the field and then we'll go up into the air and have a look at this. Up we go. So, as I said at the beginning, I don't know if that is the correct way of mowing the field with that type of mower. Yeah, you can see where I've gone off. But, yes, it will work, definitely. We'll be able to use the forage harvester on that. We should be able to get it all collected up. In fact, that took longer than I thought it would do. So, I should think there is a lot of silage is going to be in there. Yeah, I'm quite impressed by that. Anyway, I think to put an end to this, please do like the video if you like the field, the way I've cut it. And I might be opening up myself up to a lot of dislikes here, but please do dislike it if you do not like it either. And surprisingly, there is the whole map from above. That looks actually smaller than I thought it was. That's really weird. But yeah, definitely a good view from up here. It's amazing how much detail you can cram into a relatively small map. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, you can join me again the same time next Tuesday for part number 10. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.